God bless you, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, DJ Sam Rock, and we're here for another week. It's a new start of a new week, so I'm glad the day is already made. God knows the plans of the day. I don't have to worry about the day. You don't have to worry about the day. Let the day worry for itself as we go ahead and praise God and give him all the glory, honor, worship, and praise. He deserves it. I don't deserve it. You know, maybe you think you deserve it, but ultimately... God deserves all the praise, honor, and glory for what he has done, for what he's doing, for what he did yesterday, for what he's going to do in the future, for what he's doing right now. He's an eternal God, yet he's here. He's everywhere here. Jehovah Shammah, the God who is there and the God who is here in your situation and my situation, he's an amazing God. So enough said, right? Because God is ultimately good. When I say God is good, God is the only one who is good. So therefore, there's nothing good that we can do apart from what God has already established as something being good. He sets the standards and we follow. Amen. So we're talking about comfort and strength today on the Morning Devo. And I posed the question that was posed to me early this morning by way of Holy Spirit God. Because when I wake up, I ask him, you know, if I'm hearing correctly, I want to hear from him before I speak about him. Amen. And we're talking about eternal benefits. And these are the questions. Would you want temporary relief from pain or permanent relief from pain? Think about it. It's not your question. Would you want something that will relieve your pain? Whatever that pain may be. It could be in your body. It could be in your mind. It could be through a relationship, through a loss of a life, a loss of a loved one. Those type of things. Whatever brings you pain, would you want temporary relief? Like a temporary relief or permanent relief? That's the first you know, question I want to drop in your spirit. Second one goes, can you have permanent anything in this world that we're living in today? Can you have permanent anything in this world today? Can you claim something and get what you're claiming in this world today that'll be permanent? And we're talking about eternity. So when I say permanent, I mean forever. Eternity is forever. Forever is a long time, right? Forever, 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 times eternity, times infinity. I'm talking about forever. Can anything be offered by this world today that will promise us benefits forever? Think about it. So Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17 will be in there today, this morning. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate. Now's the time to do it. It could be during the live. It could be after the live, during the podcast live, or when you're listening on the replay. If something comes up in your heart, in your soul, and you want to address something, you want to speak something, comment about something, you have a prayer request, don't hesitate. Leave it on there. If you don't want people to see it publicly and you just want me to see it privately so we could probably speak and pray and agree or you know address the comment or concern that you have, you could always inbox me. That's behind the scenes on any of the social media platforms that I'm streaming from. Also, if you want to just bypass the whole you know matrix of social media, you could go straight to live.soulwinners with a Z.org. Sign up. It takes less than 40 seconds, I promise you, it's so very easy, and it's a one and done deal. You sign up, there's a place where you could um, connect with me privately, and also there's a button that literally says prayer request, and or request prayer, and you could click that button, fill out the information, and boom, we're there, amen? You want to live eternal life, amen, amen. Um, of course, it's already set in our hearts. People who, some people who don't even believe that there's a God, have eternity set in their heart. Amen. Um, a lot of people that I know, and a lot of people that you know, ultimately want eternal life. Who wants to die? Really, I don't know a lot of people that want to die. Amen. Thank you so much. That was uh, Brother Danny Hansen, and he's over at the Blaze Bible Studies group on <clears throat> Facebook. Thank you for the comment, my friend. So you want to live eternal life, and... Um, other people think, since they feel that there's no God, they're actually asking for eternal death. So it's either or, right? It's either life or death. There's really no other option. We're going to live and we're going to die. But in the meantime, wouldn't you want something that was promised or that you could claim to have on this side of eternity 
that was permanent? Or would you just rather play it out wherever the cards, you know, lie, um, however they're dealt, where however the cards are dealt, and just, you know, live your life by some kind of chance and randomness? I'd rather have order. I don't know what the future's going to bring, but I know who holds the future. I can't tell you what's going to happen in your future. I'm not a future or, or tarot card reader or fortune teller. But I can introduce you to someone who promised us eternity, who promised us eternal benefits. Amen. Eternal life. His name is the Lord Jesus. Amen. So we're going to be in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Let's see what it's going to take us. So let's pray. I'm going to take a minute to pray. Then after we pray, amen. And if you want to agree, you just say amen. If you don't agree, amen. Just listen closely. Amen. Just hang out with us for a little bit. And after we pray, we're going to share this out for like 60 seconds. And after the 60 seconds is over, we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that although tomorrow is not promised, you even did better than promising us tomorrow. You promised us eternal life for those who put their hope, faith, and trust in you, Lord Jesus. Father God, you're not, not only our Lord, you're not only our Savior, but you are our God and our Father who loves us. And I thank you, Lord God, for sending one just like you, Holy Spirit God, to live in every single person who believes and who identifies with Christ, that you would guide us, remind us of your word, and lead us into this trueness and this newness of life, and that you have promised us not only a day-by-day living, just getting by living, but abundant life. And I pray for every single person who does not have your promise, who does not have your word, who does not have your spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you yourself will give them a supernatural encounter with you today as they are speaking and they're hoping and they're searching for truth, Lord God, that you would just show up in their hearts and their minds and their lives today, however you want to do it, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, by faith that you would continue to magnify yourself, that your word will be evident as um, evidence that we could have tangible evidence of what you're doing on this side of eternity and we could trust and obey and take heed to your warnings and trust your word to live this life out to our fullest in abundance. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith over every single listener, every single person that's watching, every single person that's listening. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So I got a couple of amens. Brother Ricky, God bless you. Amen, amen. And also back from Danny. He gives us an amen as well. So listen, let's take 60 seconds to share this out. Help me break the algorithm of my shadow ban and share it to all the platforms that you like and that you have friends on. Or maybe you just want to reach out to someone with live that someone's with a Z.org. Send them the link and they'll be right here with us. Amen. So let's go for it. And when we return, we'll go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. I'll be right back. Brother Anthony says, amen, amen. Yes. Amen. We're going to get this comfort and strength. And it's not temporary according to the word of God. It's permanent and it's eternal. I'll be right back. Amen, amen. Let's go for it. Second Corinthians, Second Thessalonians, excuse me, chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. The word of God says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us by his grace, gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. Now, let me give you a quick um, lesson on the way this is bread. 
Remember, this is a translation from Greek, right, to English. So a lot of people say, they use scriptures like this to say that God and Jesus are two separate people or two separate um, powers or two separate deities. But let, let me give you a way of reading this that will give you clarity about this comfort and strength that God says we can claim because he's offering in a, us this comfort and strength. Let's read it this way. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, our father, he's both. He's our Lord and God and our father. He's all three who loved us by his. So if this was two different people, like people always tell me, look, it says it right here, Jesus Christ and God. If it was two separate people, then it would have said who loved us by their grace it doesn't say by their grace. It says who loved us by his grace. You see, he took all the Lord, God, and Father. He took all three, turned it into one. He can only do that. Who loved us by his grace. Amen. God's riches at Christ's expense. So the comfort and strength that God offers us is greater, much greater, much, much, much greater than the world offers comfort and strength. The world wants us to be comfortable in our living room, in our cars, and wants us to be comfortable in our relationship, amen, with our health. It wants us to be comfortable with everything that's happening. It wants us, the world system says, you need to tolerate, you need to approve, you need to accept everything that comes your way. That's the comfort that the world offers. It's so temporary, right? Because things are always changing. Styles changing, music changes. You know, relationships change, our body changes as we get older. So those are all temporary things that the world system is offering us as some kind of comfort and strength. When God speaks about comfort and strength, he says he's doing it because he can do it. Number one, he's our Lord, Jesus Christ himself. He's our God and he's our father. And he's doing this because he loves us and he's not giving us the punishment we deserve, but covering what our sins by grace. He's given us eternal, not temporary pain relief. It's eternal pain relief, not temporary, you know, comfort. This is eternal comfort. It says it right here. Who loved us by his grace gave us. He loved us. So he gave us. He loved us. So he did something about his love. The Bible says in Romans, I think it's five, eight. God demonstrated his own love in this. Right. His own love. I hope I'm quoting the right scripture. But the scripture says God demonstrated his own love, not the love of this world, not the love of from a religion, his own love in this, that while we still hated him, he still died for us. Drop that in your spirit. There's a lot of haters going around, a lot of haters of God. God still died for them from eternity past. He already knew what's going to happen today and in the future going forward. Eternity is a long time. I always tell people, listen, forever is a long time. This side of eternity is temporary. It's very short. The other side, which matters more. What matters more when you're watching sports? Does it matter that somebody went, got to the playoffs? Or does it matter that somebody won the playoffs and then went to the championship and won it? It's completeness. God is offering us complete comfort. God is offering us complete strength. The world has no dibs on that. Cannot offer you complete anything. As a matter of fact, the world can't offer you anything that's permanent. If you really think about it. I need thinkers today. Think about it. What is this world offering you that's permanent? Nothing. Think about it real clear. But God, our Father, who loved us by his grace, gave us eternal comfort and a wonderful hope. And the hope that God offers in his word never disappoints. Comfort you. And strengthen you, comfort you and strengthen you um, when you lose someone, when things are not going right in your life, when your health is starting to deteriorate um, when, or being challenged, when your finances are being challenged, when your relationship is being, when your marriage is being challenged, when your children are going buck wild and maybe doing their old prodigal thing and they're rebelling. God offers us eternal comfort and wonderful hope, comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say well it looks like we could do some good things and we could say some good things according to the scripture so why not amen 
why not offer, why not take an offer from God that he's saying, all we have to do is claim this. We're part of his family. We're his children. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, encouraging one another to claim this today as your very own. Own what God is offering. Amen. Um, I think um, my friend Danny says he can't share. Um, it might be Danny. Um, you have to be a member. You know, you have to be a member to the Blaze Bible Studies. If you're not a member, um, just become a member. I'll approve it right away, and then you'll be able to share. Also, if you go to um, any one of my social media, um, I'm streaming live on YouTube, uh, Facebook groups, Facebook page, and my personal private profile page on Facebook. You can share from there as well. Thank you so much uh, for even offering um, to share. I really am grateful for that. So claim this today. Sometimes we need to look in the mirror and speak to ourselves. Speak the word of God. I refuse. And I've been doing this for years. I refuse to speak anything negative over your life and over my life. Um, if it's not coming from the word. <clears throat> Let me explain. When people are acting crazy, very few people know how I feel about the people that are acting crazy. I think only one or two people will know. My wife is definitely one person who knows and I express my concern for others. Amen. And so that way it's no gossip going on. It's just between me and my wife and, you know, we're praying about it. We're speaking about it. She'll correct me if I'm wrong and vice versa. But I refuse to go to any person and speak to them as if they're not part of what the word of God is speaking to me. In other words, I didn't always believe in Jesus. You didn't always believe in Jesus. You might not believe in Jesus right now, but the word still remains. The word is still true. Comfort and strength is still offered. We have this eternal promise from God, eternal benefits from God that are separate from the world system. So I'll speak life over people who are dying, who are in sin, and back up off of them because if they don't want to receive the message of the gospel, you know, then I can't force nobody. God himself doesn't force anybody to receive his message. But he offers us eternal comfort, eternal strength, salvation, eternal life. He offers us everything that is good. And over here at the end of verse um, 17 in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, he says, Comfort you and strengthen you in every good thing you do and say. Not everything that he doesn't says, because he's good already. But how about something good coming out of your mouth? So I make sure I try to say something good at the end of my complaint, my rant, my rate. Try to say something good. and Try to do something good. Amen. So that God will give, give me the blessing, give you the blessing as well. Morning, Sister Joyce. God bless you as well. It's good to see you on the morning, Devo. My sister, my friend. So this is very short, but it's to the point. And I'm hoping you're getting the point about... What God is offering. Let's get back to the questions. We have some time. Question number one. Would you want temporary relief from pain or permanent relief? There's a product. um, I'm not endorsing because this is a free live stream, free podcast. So uh, this is not a sponsored um, podcast. The only sponsor that you'll see is in the details. Uh, My wife, Amy Lopez, and her um, um, glamour business, her beauty business. Amen. But... There was a, a while, years ago, I was watching a commercial on Christian Network and it was talking about um, pain relief. And it says that it's temporary pain relief. I think it was called pain um, relief factor, I think it's called. And, you know, just like anything else, you're like, yeah, that's not going to work, whatever. But I purchased it because at the time my wife was having, I think, lower back pain. And um, it worked. She took the pills. It worked. Temporary relief. Um, and it felt good. She said it felt good. And um, we went ahead and I think I bought a whole, like they give you a trial. And then you could go ahead and choose if you wanted to buy a whole subscription for a whole month. And it worked. but was very temporary. Amen. But the temporary pain that was relieved gave her some opportunities to do things that normally she wouldn't be doing because of the back pain. How much more can, I, I wish the world would offer something that's, permanent pain relief but unfortunately none of us could offer that only god could offer you permanent relief from pain it's no pill you could take 
There's no uh, program you could do. Now, there's places where you could go, like chiropractors, um, people who are um, really professional pain relief doctors and all that, which serve their purpose and thank God for them. But they will tell you right off the bat, that's only a temporary thing. They could remove things. They could try to restructure things. If you have a bad knee, you have bad hips, they could restructure it. They could put it together again. But they'll tell you it will only last 10 years, 20 years, or whatever. And then it's going to be back to where you started. When God offers or promises something or fixes something in our lives, it's eternal. So there's really no comparison between the comfort and strength that God is speaking of versus the comfort and strength that this world can ever offer us. Amen? I'm just trying to get you to the Word. I'm just trying to get you to read the Word for yourself and read it over yourself, speak it over yourself. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. And the second question, so listen, my answer, I want permanent relief. But I know on this side of eternity, um, my pain and my struggles and everything, uh, temporary, it's going to be a temporary time, but I'm looking at eternity. Amen? I know... You know, I can't do a, uh, a lot about the pain and suffering in this world. But what I could do is share the gospel message of a, of a man named Jesus, a man who is God, who is our Father, who is our Savior. And he sent Holy Spirit God to just speak what he has spoken. I just repeat what his word says. And I watch the power of God's word demonstrate his word for himself, for his glory. And then you get the benefit. I get the eternal benefit. You get the eternal benefits. And we just live life like that, sharing what we know to be true. Second question, can you have permanent anything in this world today? Now That sounds like a trick question, but I want you to think about that. You don't have to answer it now, but if you want to answer it now on the live chat, go ahead. But um, can this world have permanent anything? Like what what? Let's think about it. What does this world offer that's permanent? That will always be like. As a matter of fact, scientists are saying that one way or another, that this world is burning up. Like this, this whole planet is going to burn up. Scientists know that. And it just agrees with the scripture in Revelation. Where the Revelation says um, that's going to happen at the end times. But we're burning up. Like climate, you know, whatever changes they say are coming. Um, none of us are getting younger. There's glaciers uh, in Antarctica and places like that that are melting, that will cause flooding. So everything that we're seeing this world coming to is coming to uh, uh, an end. But you ever heard the expression or the question when people ask you or me, what is this world coming to? I said, I don't know what this world is coming to. It's coming to an end, but God is coming to this world. Jesus is coming back. Amen. And he's not coming with something old. He's coming with something new. A new heaven and a new earth. Because he's the only one that could give us the newness that he offers. Give us this eternal life. Give us this eternal comfort. Give us eternal strength. He has a wonderful hope available to us. Sometimes you have to read the word and claim it for yourself. What are you waiting for? Nothing is permanent in this lifetime. Ricky Kennedy says nothing. Nothing is permanent in this lifetime. I could store up riches on earth, houses, cars, you know, whatever, bank accounts, all that, you know, and I could store it up. Yes, it will help the ministry. Yes, it will help uh, the way of living. Yes, I will be able to reach more people because I have, you know, finances to do that. But when my time is up here on this earth, all of that stuff that I just mentioned, it stays here, right? It stays here. But. The beautiful thing about the gospel, when you spread the gospel, when you share Jesus with somebody else, you're literally storing riches in heaven where no thief, no moth, no rust, no depreciation goes on. None of that. No one can touch the riches that we store in heaven when we share Jesus, when we share the gospel, and when we talk about this true eternal benefits that God offers. So you can stack up, you know, the chips here. And enjoy it while it lasts. Money comes and money goes. But in eternity, in heaven, in that place that God has set for us, wherever that place looks like, wherever that place is, I believe it's in heaven. I just can't tell you where it's at. I can't map it out. 
God knows exactly where it is. He created it. He's waiting for us um, there um, to join us there. But it's coming a day where we have to make a choice. Uh, we're going to bet or put all our egg, eggs in one basket in this world system and deny everything that God is offering. Or we're going to investigate the claims of the Lord. Look at the word of God clearly with an open heart. Ask Jesus to come into your heart, into your life and change your life. Or you're just going to just bow down to the idols and to the gods of this world and just live a temporary relief, have a temporary relief, have temporary comfort, have temporary um, hope, right? Or claim this over your life today. I don't, I don't even know if there's any better way um, to, you know, give it to you. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, read the whole chapter for yourself. We're camping out at verses 16 and 17. And I love it. It says now. This doesn't say later, may our Lord. It says now, may our Lord, Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Direct connect. Because we have all access to what God is doing because of what the Son has already done. Direct access to what God is doing because of what the Son has already done. This is not a religion. Religion is about do this, do that. These many times, face this way, face that way, you know, try to good do, do good deeds. Religion is about doing, 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 doing. The gospel message of the Lord Jesus is about it's done. We're just catching up to what already has been, what already has been done. Amen. And we have the eternal blessings, the eternal benefits from our Lord Jesus, our Father, our God, our Savior. There's nothing else like it. Amen. You could try to recreate something like Christianity or like being a Christ follower, but you won't find the perfect God anywhere else except in the hearts of every single believer that has Holy Spirit in their lives, reminding us of who he is, reminding us of who he is. Brother Rich, God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. He says, watch out for the occults that people um, that, that preach things and message sent by angels, even delivered to prophets. But all of them have this in common, come from angels. Anyone who preaches another gospel is a curse. They are out there. Let's preach truth. Amen. Uh, people um, give and bow down to angels and they speak about angels. I believe in angels. Um, Brother Rich believes in angels, but we're not supposed to worship an angel. We only worship one, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. We only worship God, the triune God, the only one living, holy, righteous, loving God. Amen. So when an angel comes, the an angel, if it's from the Lord, amen, will not even, you know, receive your worship. You will say, wait, don't worship me. Worship the one who sent me. Amen. The sent ones of God, angels. Thank you so much, Rich, for that comment. Ricky Kennedy says, have a good day, brother. Enjoy your videos. Thank you and prayers. Amen. Amen. Uh, I pray you really enjoy this. I really hope it inspires you. It moves you into reading of the scriptures, man. Because the word of God will open eyes. The word of God will open hearts. The word of God will cause us to open our mouths and share this truth with other people. Because we have this comfort and strength. And it's not a temporary fix. It's an eternal fix. Amen. It's an eternal benefit. Amen. That we have by receiving what God has offered us and claiming it today. Amen. I don't want to claim this word tomorrow. I'm going to claim this word for my life and for your life today. Rich Tyler says, study your Bible, people. Yes, Brother Sam, please keep sharing this truth. All religions can't secure our salvation, and Jesus is not an angel. <laughs> yes, like some of my friends say that, you know, he's Archangel Michael. You know, um, people have traditions and ways that they grew up in, and I understand that. I kind of respect it, too, because uh, I've asked them, um, some people that preach outside, uh, preach a different gospel. I always ask them, how how did you come to, you know, to that position of understanding of, of God? Oh, yeah, you know, I grew up in this. A lot of people would tell you I grew up in this. And the funny thing is, a lot of people who really don't know my background, they really think I grew up in the church. Amen. Because of how I'm speaking now, I'm acting now, how I'm responding now, what I believe. Surprise, I didn't get saved till I was 30 years old, didn't grow up in the church. I had some religious activity in a Catholic church, um, but I don't even want to, 
honor that as being a religious thing because it was the most craziest things I was doing in those church buildings and those cathedrals and those Christian, um, excuse me, in those Catholic youth organization retreats. I don't even want to go there. So I had no relationship. I had an association or I had an acquaintance with religious people doing religious things, traditions of men, but no power of God. So surprise, I didn't grow up in a church. Amen. And if you did grow up in a church, a Christian Bible believing, Holy Ghost, Spirit filled church environment, um, you, you're blessed. Stay in the word, stay in that environment, stay encouraged. I know your flesh is going to want out you to feel like you're missing out. Fear of missing out. You're in that FOMO zone. Listen, let me talk to my young brother and my sister um, that uh, grew up in the church. You're blessed. The world is horrible. The world sucks. It has nothing for you. Don't come out. Don't come out into the world. It's not good for you. It's nothing will benefit you. I know you want what me, Brother Rich, and so many other people that I know, you want what we hate, that we got out of because we realized it was a lie. We realized it was no eternal benefit. We realized that we were in a self-destruct mode. We realized that sin was only pleasurable for a season. Stay encouraged. Stay in the faith. Stay in the body. You were born and raised in the church. That was God shielding you, protecting you from everything outside of that environment. Amen. If you have a personal relationship with the Lord, you're filled with his word, filled with Holy Spirit God. You're being taught the scriptures. You're in the Bible. You're in Bible studies. And I know you're looking at the other people your age. Looks like they're having a lot of fun. They are having a lot of fun, but they're not being blessed. They're having temporary fun. They're having temporary comfort. Um, They look like they have temporary strength, but they don't have any good thing. They don't speak good things. They don't do good things because they don't have the good one living inside of them. So don't believe the hype. Don't believe, you know, I know the YouTube channel makes everything look glamorous. I know the world paints itself like it's the best thing uh, since sliced bread. But don't do it. Stay in the faith. Stay encouraged. You are light years ahead of your peers. Amen. Share the gospel with them. And you will get filled up with everything that God wants to fill you up with. Amen. Amen. Watch out. For the trap of being a true Israel, we are not to preach flesh, nationality, or race, but Christ. We are spiritual Israel. Our father is Abraham, the father of faith. Don't get deceived, but be informed by study. Amen. Amen. It seems like um, um, Brother Rich have had some uh, run-ins with the uh, Hebrew Israelites or the black Israelites, um, and he's... um, Speaking truth on behalf of those people who are trying to deceive you. He's speaking the truth and getting you out of that deception. Nationality? Yeah. Why would I go preach a nationality? Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Amen. And yes, he's the king of the Jews. Amen. And we were adopted into the family of God if you're outside of Jew, right, of being a Jewish or Hebrew. Amen. And so let's Speak about it. Let's talk about it. Let's stay on for, on course. Second Thessalonians. I'm out of time. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Read the whole chapter. We camped out in verses sixteen and seventeen. God is great. God is good. Amen. All the time. So I bless you all. Thank you for hanging out with me. I pray that the comfort and strength of God will cover you today and moving forward. Claim the promises of God. Claim His His eternal benefits for your life, and you will really, really um, be filled up and empowered and encouraged day by day, no matter what life throws our way. So God bless you, God keep you, and remember always, always remember this, that God is good. Peace.